Hello again, clickers. My name is Maria Shandorova and I am responsible for product development at Infinity. Welcome to Technical Tuesday. I hope you have already installed your forms. If you do, you probably know that there is a forms admin application in the My Work section of user who installed forms. This application is developed for managing forms in your Click environment. Yes, we use forms in a ClickSense application for managing your forms in your ClickSense environment. On this third sheet, there is a list of your forms instances. As I explained in a previous video, form instance is a unique identifier of a data storage of your forms. And when you want to create a new data storage, it's very simple because there is this plus button and you can simply add information about the new data storage. There are different types of data storages. For example, general, that means that data from your forms general will be stored to XML file. General SQL is the same, but the storage is SQL database. And there are also different types according to different types of forms objects. If you haven't seen my previous video, I really recommend it. I explained the main concept of forms instances. In the previous video, I was talking about storing data into XML files. So now let's try to connect to a database. I want to create a new connection for forms general. So I will choose this possibility of type general SQL. Now I will add the form instance ID, the unique identifier. And since I choose the possibility general SQL, as you can see, there is this new button, the wizard that will help me to create my connection to a database. This is a new feature of Forms 6.0, our latest release. And here is a pop-up window that will help me to create my database connection string. I can simply choose a specific type of a database or choose the possibility other. The only technical requirement for connecting to a database is that uh, it has to have a JDBC driver. Therefore, this is not a full list of supported databases. It's only a list of most used databases for storing data by using forms. I have my data in this one, so I will choose it. And you can see that some of fields have been pre-filled to help me. If I don't have a driver already on this server, I can download a specific driver for this database type on this URL. But I have already done it on this server, so I'm okay with it. My server address is localhost database name user. If you don't know this information, you should contact your administrator. Password and also a name of table where the data is going to be stored and the key column. The key column is a name of a field in uh, this table that's going to be used for storing key values, unique identifiers of rows. And simply click OK save my changes and what is very important is that after I do any changes in this list of form instances I have to update form settings by clicking on this button. I will copy form instance ID and uh, here is my demo application that contains information about sales budgeting and planning. As you can see, I'm going to create a version one of our budget. Here in already defined object forms, we will find information in properties panel that as form instance ID, form general is used. Form general is a default form instance ID that's responsible for storing data into XML file called form general. That's the reason why all these cells are empty. 
However, when I want to edit uh, version 1 of my budget, it would be very helpful to have the data here. For demo purposes, I have this data in a database. I just connect it via forms. So what I need to do is only change form instance ID from form general to Tech Tuesday. That's the one we have created. And now all data from a database are shown here and available for modification. In dimensions, I can see that this is what I use as a key field uh, in ClickSense, and these values exactly are what is going to be stored in the key field I set for a database. So this key column ID. This is the way how it's connected. The main difference between database and XML data storage, except for database and XML data storage, <laughs> is that when you use XML file as a data storage, all fields you add to your form object will be created automatically. So I can create a new field, manager, Manager, it's going to be text, and I want to have it somewhere in the beginning. And when I will use a form instance ID connected to XML file, I can simply input my data to this new field, and it's going to be created in XML file. However, when you want to edit your data in a database, we don't want to let the, all your users to create a new fields in a database that also can be used for different purposes for your uh, CRM processes and so on. And because of it, we decided that the structure of form should respect the structure of a database table. But how can you know if this field manager is there or not? I can click on test and go through results of this test. Here I will find also information that ID is the field that was set as key. And the manager field I tried to use is missing in the database, so this data is not going to be stored anywhere. And there are also some recommendations for me about the different uh, data types. As I mentioned many times before, we have developed forms and are going to develop forms as simple as possible. And you can see it here. It's only one field in a property panel that's responsible for managing where your data from forms object is going to be stored. If it's a database, if it's XML file, which table, which file, what fields will be used. The concept of form instance ID is really crucial for understanding possibilities of forms. And what's really great about it from my developer point of view is that form instance ID can be defined also not as a fixed string, but you can use click expression. And it really opens a new universe of possibilities how storing data can be handled. But for now, we are going to an end of this video and I will definitely say something more about these possibilities in next videos. Thank you for watching, guys, and enjoy forms.